All right, I've got a couple old uh, 22 autos that just recently came in here for some restoration work. Uh, this one's a 22 short. It's an old early model, what we call the wheel sight. Has the uh, little uh, elevation adjustment here uh, for the wheel. Um, a lot of these out there, they're worth quite a bit of money, especially in the short models. They bring good money. Uh, they have a little longer barrel on them. Uh, we're gonna, this is gonna be broken down. We're gonna restore this one completely. This is an old early model uh, long rifle. This little gun is rough as a cob. It's seen better days, but we're going to restore it and make it look new uh, again. And um, maybe we'll just start with this little old early model here and we'll talk about this a little bit. In the early days, they first started manufacturing these guns. As you can see, they dovetailed the receiver tops. Well, that's all fine and good, but you can kind of see the drawback of that in that, uh, you know, if you put a scope on that gun and then you decide to go around and take your barrel off and then you put it back on there's really no guarantee that you know everything's going to come back in just like it was so that was not a real good idea on these now i couldn't find one this morning i was looking for it browning later on went to where they made a uh, a base that uh the new model guns have two uh, holes drilled in the barrels and they make a base that screws onto the barrel and uh, extends uh up over the receiver so when you and i know most people out there have seen these there's a lot of them out there uh, so when you take your barrel off, your scope comes off with it. So then everything would stay sighted in. So um, the old early groove receivers, they're fine if you're going to put a scope on one. But I would recommend just really you know, getting it to a gunsmith or somebody and getting him to just put that barrel on like permanently. Really torque it on tight and just leave it on. Because the minute you take it off, it might change things a little bit. So anyway, that was uh, one of the modifications they made later on. They, uh, they went to that uh, new style scope base. So that's what we've got here. This is a rough old gun. It's going to need a forearm. I see somebody's drilled it for a swivel here. and The forearm, the wood on the... I'll probably buy Japanese wood and put it on this gun and refinish it to look Belgian. Uh, they really haven't changed any. Um, let's go ahead and break the old gun down here a little bit. Uh, now, here's, a, here's one of the things that happens. I see, I'll bet you a couple hundred of these every year, guns coming in, 22 autos coming in, that have had the stocks broken on them. Here's one right here, a grade three a man sent me the other day. This is a classic. Uh, the side of this stock is all twisted out and broken out. That's because these guns, uh, sometimes if the barrels are on pretty tight, we're going to repair this stock. Uh, we have to because they're expensive and, and uh, sometimes you can't get them anymore. So we're going to glue this piece in. Of course, that's going to be a complete stock refinish. But really, there's no, no reason for that thing to be broken out. And the reason that's broken out and it's broken out on this side, when you break these guns down, you take them apart, uh, you can uh, you turn that barrel a quarter of a turn and, and, and then it removes from the receiver. Well, if you get a real tight one and you get a little bit lazy, the only way to really do these properly is to grab that receiver. And when you take that barrel down, of course, what do guys do? To get more leverage, they grab them by the stock. And then what's going to happen there if you got a real tight barrel? Yeah, you get some good leverage. That, that, that's, that's true. It helps you tor torque it out a little easier. But then you get this, because the stock will twist, and they almost always break out on this side here where guys are trying to remove them. It's just a classic break on the left side of the stock. If I see one of these, I'll bet I see 100 of them a year come in for repairs. So when you break these down, do not grab that thing by the stock. If it's really tight, put this end up here in a vise or something, in a padded vise, and hold it. But the proper way is to grab that receiver. Now, take this barrel off. You've got to pull this bolt back a little bit to get your extractor out of the way. And then twist it off and remove that remove that st stock that way. That's the way you do it. Now, let's pull this form off. And uh, we're going to look under here and talk a little bit about... Um, I get these in a lot, and a lot of guys don't know exactly how to adjust them. And I don't know if my camera guy is going to be able to see it real well. But when these barrels are in these guns and they're properly adjusted, this barrel... The end of this barrel should butt up against the cartridge guide that's in the receiver, very close to it. And if you get out a turn or two, then uh, I'm going to get over here in the light. See, I don't know if this will show up any better. But as I put this barrel on, I look down in that receiver. There again, it's hard to see. And this end of this barrel is right up against that cartridge guide. Now, let me take this off here and bring it. Now, when I talk about a cartridge guide, that is this piece right here let's pull this magazine tube out and get it out of the way <clears throat> excuse me here's a this is your cartridge guide now when that barrel goes in that gun if that's out a turn or two on a barrel you're going to have a gap in here which is going to cause you problems so when you put that 
barrel on that gun, you want it to be right up against that guide. It won't be just right up touching necessarily, but it's got to be very close to it. Now, here's the thing. Here's the way you adjust these guns, the barrel rings. You can do this yourself. That's what it's made for. Now, on the early guns here, they had uh, this little uh, uh, adjustment ring lock here, and they had one spring and one plunger in it. And uh, the idea being is that you should be able to turn this uh, adjustment ring uh, and it'll have a little ratchet effect. But sometimes they get really tight and, and the ratchets, uh, the lock on it's biting in a little too hard. So you may have to remove your forearm and then back this ring off a little bit. Uh, and uh, then once you've done that, you can kind of mount it all back in the gun. Let's get this out of the way here. And if you pop this back too far, of course your springs are going to shoot out and hit you in the eye and you don't want to do that. But uh, when you bring this around, uh, you can, with a forearm off, I find sometimes be a little easier to kind of adjust this ring. Now there again, this one's not turning, which is kind of, you know, does happen. So you may have to push it back and remove that little lock all together. Now, now your ring will turn real easy. You can adjust it. You can kind of put it on and you can get it up to where it's almost in the position of going in. Back that ring off a little bit to where you get it right where you want. You want your barrel to go on tight. You don't want it to be real floppy when it goes on there. Now I'm about where I want to be on that. So now I will take, and you'll need like a little old jeweler screwdriver or something to push down the, your spring here. And so you put your uh, your adjustment uh, ring latch in place here and try not to lose your spring and plunger, but don't worry, that happens all the time. And Browning's got them, there's lots of them. So push that down, get it out of your way, and then push your adjustment ring back on. Then you can push your forearm back on. But oft times, usually you can turn this ring. This ratchet isn't that tight. The new models have two springs. They have a, um, they also have a spring, uh, instead of this little, uh, this is the old model um, lock, the uh, new models, instead of this little uh, ratchet to, to bite into the ratchet on here, they have a spring and a plunger that's got a flat on it. It's a little better system. But these work, and, uh, you know, no reason to, to uh, think otherwise. It's a lot of things a lot of people don't know, and I didn't really realize it for years. This little stud on here that your uh, forearm screw goes into, it goes on two ways, and actually one way, if you get it on backwards, it'll leave your form a little gappy against the receiver. So, but there's really no reason to take that out. So, that's just something that's that's of interest. Uh, one thing on these wheel sight guns, this is the this is your adjustment ring here on a 22 short, and a lot of guys don't notice this this either. It's just a point of interest. On a 22 short, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, they have a little circle in the middle. That that tells you that that's a uh, that's a short. That little circle in the middle of that uh, wheel. So something interesting. Uh, now, as I take this gun down, I'm just going to show you the basics on this. What's well, a classic on these, and happens quite often, guys will take them apart, and this is a cartridge stop. And these things are just kind of sticking in the bottom of the receiver. Sometimes they stick in there kind of hard and, you know, uh, have some resistance to them, don't come out. Other times, they'll just fall out like that. So it's not unusual to get these guns in with that piece missing. Well, you just go to Brown and get a new one. They've got them. Now, another thing we were talking about this cartridge guide earlier. I'm going to remove it here. And uh, as your round feeds out through the magazine here, it's going to come into this cartridge guide. And this is just what it says it is. It guides your round in the chamber. Well, the piece, there's a spring here that holds this cartridge guide in place. Now, this thing, I don't know what, the, I forget what they call this spring. It's a cartridge guide retaining spring, I guess, as they call it. And that's what it's there for, is to hold that cartridge guide in. But it has one other purpose, too. Let's see if we can get it out. And they just pop out. You just rotate them around, and they they just pop out, unless you're trying to. Okay. So there. <clears throat> now, another thing this little spring does, and it's, it's a retainer that just holds that in place. But as you see, it protrudes through this cartridge guide. Now, it has a purpose there. As a round comes into this cartridge guide, it hits right on the edge of this spring and holds it in position just like that until the bolt comes forward and uh, it'll peel it off and that as, as the, the power of the bolt comes forward it'll pop that spring out of the way and let it feed on into the chamber so this has a purpose and one of the little things you need to remember on these is you need to put a little bevel on the side of these that comes in contact with the cartridge on the underside 
you need to kind of radius that a little bit because if you don't when that round comes in there and it's got a real sharp edge on it it'll really grip onto that uh, cartridge tighter than it should and the cartridge has got to be able to snap past that so good idea to put a little radius on the underside of that as you do that and that's just one thing to look for now there's really not much else to talk about in here these little guns uh, they're simple they come apart easy they're easy to clean when you pull out uh, your whole uh, trigger assembly here uh, if you want to really give it a good cleaning and you can do this right at home this is my air pop-up get your uh, bolt spring out of the way uh, remove your firing pin and the spring and these little guns get really well they're like any other 22 they get dirty 22s are just that way good idea on these to remove the extractor and you do that by just pushing out this pin here usually you just push them out with your fingers this one's a little tighter tap it out when you remove that pin hang on you're you're removing this is your uh, uh this holds your spring to your extractor this little piece right here and here's your extractor spring let's just take that extractor out. these things get really cruddy and dirty behind the extractor you can usually and this is not as bad as something you can just usually just bring out tons of crud that packs in there so you need to get that and scrape that out of there get this over in some solvent and give it a good cleaning uh, clean it up well and then put a put your extractor back in place put your little uh, spring in the retainer right there and uh, uh, simply put it that's the beauty of these little guns are just simple they're just there's really not much to them there's not much to break and that's the beauty of any firearm the simplicity is the best thing ever and put all that back in and then uh, give this a good scrubbing up this is your disconnector here uh, if that's working properly when you push down on this disconnector this is your sear you push down this disconnector this should pop up like that push down that that pops up that means your disconnector is working now to put it all back in it's easy you just drop your firing pin back in it can only go one way your firing pin spring drop it in bring back this uh, spring put in the guide and here's your bolt uh, spring put that in by just kind of holding on to things and sliding it all back in and uh, putting it right back here on the retainer where it goes and uh, then you can check it you know you can drop that firing pin and then kind of bring it back and hold your trigger down that's how you check make sure it's disconnecting hold the trigger down bring the bolt back and then you should have to release that trigger before it'll fire again so there's disconnecting check your safety and all and you're ready to go be careful of that little cartridge guide they're easy to lose uh, if it falls out when you're cleaning your gun don't worry just it goes right back in you need uh, some tweezers or something to kind of get your fingers down there it's kind of hard now scrub these out good when you break them down put that back into position there it just drops in the hole only goes one way there it goes then to put your bolt back in of course you have to pull it back to the rear a little bit and i see i forgot to put the cartridge guide in here but well, maybe i better put it back in i'm not going to work on this gun for a little bit yet i got to break it down for a reblue and a wood finish there's one other thing i was going to show you here while i let's put this back in and you really when you clean them i wouldn't remove this little uh spring here it's just really not necessary just give it a good scrubbing out with a toothbrush or something you want to take it out you can it's not a big deal uh there it pops right back in